What's going on, y'all? Not the real Will Smith and another for your mother. Today, we are going over how to change or flush and refill your coolant system on any vehicle, but specifically, this is a 2014 Jeep Grand Cherokee Summit. So, if you guys are wondering, it's a six cylinder. <clears throat> Right here to cap here. Um, bleeder valve back here. All right. So we'll jump into it in a second. The reason why we are starting on the book, because I want to show you guys that you should always look at your owner's manual first to see what your capacity for coolant is. If you guys go on your table of contents on your specific vehicle's uh, user manual, you'll go over to the fluid section, which is maintaining your vehicle it could be like diy or just your general preventative maintenance it should be in that section if you guys have that option you guys want to look so you see fluids and capacities gasoline version this is a gas vehicle not a diesel so i'm going to page 176 all right so 3.6 liter engine that's the one that i have fluid lubricant we recommend that you use mopar antifreeze coolant 10 year 150 mile um oat organic additive technology. So this is important. You need to know if you have an OAT level coolant or a HOAT, um, at least for Jeeps. And it's saying the capacity is 10.4 quarts. What's gonna happen when we drain out the coolant is that all the coolant will not come out of it the first time. So that's why we do a flush. We'll drain out what we can. We'll refill it with tap water initially because that's getting flushed out too. And then the second time it should be clearer, which is getting out the rest of that, the quartz. And then you can add in distilled water mixed with pure coolant if you guys do a 50-50 mix. And I'll explain what that means in a second. All right, it's looking a little scratched up, my coolant bottle, just because I've had this in here a while, but it's new coolant. I haven't used it yet. Uh, as you guys uh, noticed earlier that it said OAT. That is the type of coolant that it, we're using. If you also look at extended life, five year, 150,000 miles, I know that I can still use this. No, this is not Mopar uh, coolant, also because I'm getting rid of my Jeep, but at least the right coolant is going in there level-wise. So if you guys look, GM Chrysler Ford, my coolant is orange that came from the factory, but this coolant is also OAT. You see compatibility right here? Warranty will not void warranty, corrosion, five years, 150,000 miles works for orange so this is the reason why you can use this this is also a hundred percent coolant so you must add water which is where the distilled water comes in all right so now that we guys went over what coolant is specific for your vehicle based on your owner's manual and how many quarts that your vehicle needs we're going to go to the front of the engine and i'm going to show you guys how i'm going to drain out the coolant so tools needed for this job distilled water flathead screwdriver at least for our bleeder screw, and I'll show you guys what that is in a second. Get out however much coolant you need based on your vehicle. I have a jack stand or a ramp. You guys can use either or, just to prop up the vehicle a little bit. And I have a drain container to collect your coolant. You shouldn't be putting coolant on the ground. Um, there's different regulations based on the states on how to transport it and empty it out. I'm just bringing this to AutoZone, they'll dispose of it for me. Number one, take this off, literally pops off. It's just the engine cover, but you guys can't see the bleeder screw. We need to unscrew that because if I squeeze the upper radiator holds a little tight. I let the car cool about 15 minutes, but because it's tight still, you never want to open this when it's hot. So what you do is you look over here where the air box is, use your flathead screwdriver, or I believe this is a eight millimeter um, socket right here. And you just loosen it up. Not too much, doesn't matter. Pop that thing on. Boom. And if you guys look back here, follow this uh, upper radiator hose, you'll see this thermostat right there. Boom. On this thermostat is a bleeder screw, a bleeder valve. You'll loosen it just slightly, turn it to the left a little bit, lefty loosey, righty tighty. And what's going to happen is you're going to see come out very slightly. I'm going to put this underneath here. You guys will see right in this general area. So that wet moisture right there, that's what the coolant's gonna come out of. So we're gonna put this to catch the coolant. 
but make sure you take your cap off. You need to be able to drain in here. And you'll be set. So as we go back up, back to our, our bleeder valve, we want to loosen it some more. And you don't want to take it fully off because again, this coolant is a little hot. You don't want to burn yourself. But what you want to do is as that bleeder valve is draining itself out, you want to squeeze this. It's starting to get a little bit of slack. You want to be able to squeeze it to where we're almost pinching. It's not squeezed enough, but we want to open up the valve just enough to where there's no more air in the system and no more pressure so we can open this coolant cap right here. much better also apologize for all of the white um i've had a coolant leak in the past i haven't got the engine bay cleaned out yet uh, but all the white stuff is coolant um when my radiator busted if you guys actually look right there it's hard to see i'll use my um what do you call it flathead this little opening right here that you guys see right there if you come out it's the engine let me zoom out for you guys. If you guys look at that little opening right there and right there, that is where the drain um, container is at. When the coolant comes out, because we're going to drain it down here, and I'll show you guys where, there it is, that little peacock. It's going to drain directly out that way, which is why I have this ramp on this side, the driver's side, just propped up on that side. So when it drains out, it'll go directly down that way. They have a drain area on this side as well, but... I mean, you'll be fine. It's gonna go this way. All right. Get down there. Got a lot of slack now. But be very careful, right? Just twist one time, just to make sure nothing's coming out of it. Push down and turn to your left. Pull up and you're good to go. Always inspect coolant cap just to make sure there's no cracking or any seals are messed up because if your seals are messed up you should definitely replace your cap i replaced this cap about six months ago so it's pretty okay this is actually a mopar brand i went to the dealership and bought this one like i said i'm getting rid of this truck so it's fine as you guys can see there's coolant in here so we have to drain it from the peacock right there Ooh, this far. So I put a glove on just because I don't want to get burnt. So I just want you guys to be able to see exactly what I'm touching. Crap. Pretty much uh, everyone's vehicle is different, but make sure that you guys find a drain plug. It should typically be towards the bottom of the radiator. Either it's going to be on the right side or your left side. On this Jeep, it's on the driver's side front, but you facing the truck, it is on your right side. So driver's side, but right side if you're facing the truck. Let me get my light on. Oh yeah. As you guys can see. As you guys can see, it's starting to drain out from the drain plug down there. And going right out the way I said. <laughs> so just letting you guys know it's down at the bottom part. All that wetness is the coolant coming out. Also it's important to have a cap open so the coolant can come through radiator 
through the upper radiator hose, through the lower radiator hose, all the way on out. All right, with the coolant fully drained out, I gave it about seven minutes. I'm gonna put everything back together and then I'm gonna fill it with tap water. This is actually not coolant, it's just tap water in here from one of my old bottles. You guys can do the same. What I also recommend you guys to do um, is add radiator flush. I'm gonna actually add the radiator flush that I would use. It's Blue Devil, it's really good stuff. You'll add it in the first time that you fill the radiator with uh, distilled water or, or tap water for your first fill because you're gonna flush it again. Uh, I don't have it this time, but like I said, it's fine because I've done this flush with the radiator flush about maybe mm, two months ago. But again, like I said, I have a head gasket issue, so I'm just I'm I'm flushing it to check something out. Uh, you can get by it at your local AutoZone, Advanced Auto. I believe it's about ten, ranging between ten and fifteen bucks. But yeah, got your peacock down at there, the drain peacock. Add that back in there. I'm gonna pour the coolant in here. Excuse me, the uh, tap water in here, and then close your bleeder valve close that up as well and then we'll start the vehicle and let it run for about 15 minutes Now we can start the vehicle. As you guys can see, the fan kicked on. You guys can hear that in the background. The needle is right under half, so it's, it's pretty warm. We're just gonna double check. You guys get our fan running. So I'm about to cut it off right now. Let it cool down for 15 minutes, drain it, and do it again. drain it's about 15 minutes later I'm taking the peacock drain out oops the hot hold on i want you guys to see it from the bottom got a little bit of color left to it oh i should pull that up it's making a mess yeah got a little bit of color to it we're gonna put some more water in there and do it one more time and then we'll fill it up the regular way with actual uh, 50 50 coolant when uh distilled water 